The next case is a male patient in his 50s with an intraperitoneal tumor. The patient is asymptomatic at the screening CT scan revealed intraperitoneal mass, better defined by MRI, EUS and FNA will be performed by Dr. Gary May. Well, welcome. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, very Great. clearly. Well, again, I would like to thank the, uh, Dr. Winnie and the organizers. It's an honor to uh, be here in Japan and uh, participate in the meeting. So I, I thank you all for, for having me. Uh, an interesting case in that, you know, we, the, the patient is asymptomatic. He was uh, apparently found just on a CT scan done for some very nonspecific symptoms. And we have the lesion, as you saw, on the CT and the MRI. I guess the first thing I think about when you get sort of an isolated um, lesion like this is, um, you know, we want to make sure it's nothing that is going to be very serious, going to be difficult or we're going to cause problems by doing a biopsy. So the first thing I think about is, is there any chance that this could be a pheochromocytoma? Um, it's near the right kidney, um, but uh, we're told by the radiologist that it's separate from the adrenal gland. The patient is asymptomatic. He has no history of hypertension. And um, the sort of non-medullary or extramedullary pheos tend to be in the midline, so we think it's probably not a pheochromocytoma because we don't want to be sticking a needle into that. Beyond that, it really comes down to... Uh, assessing the lesion and then trying to come up with a differential and then potentially tissue because the patient is otherwise asymptomatic. Now, we have a little bit of time. So like um, one of the great EUS uh, teachers, Rob Hawes, who I think has been here in previous years, we, I, I take very similar to Rob a stationed approach to doing EOS. So we've introduced the scope into the esophagus. We're sitting just in the cardia. And our first landmark is really to look for the celiac axis, which you can see coming off the aorta sort of nicely right there. There we go. And the, uh, the importance is it gives us our landmark. And again, in a situation where we have a, a tumor that we're not sure the cause, we want to make sure we're, we're not missing any other uh, intraperitoneal lesions that would suggest this is a metastatic process. It doesn't look like it, but we want to be sure so we can look on to, the, to the left and to the right of the uh, celiac axis and just make sure we see no other nodes and that looks fairly clear. And in an exam, we'll move on to look at the pancreas and we can sort of follow the celiac axis down and we should run into the neck of the pancreas right here and you can see the pancreatic duct at the genu in the neck. The pancreatic parenchyma here looks uh, really quite homogeneous and normal. The pancreatic duct's not dilated. And as we just now, in this position, we're just really rotating uh, to my right, which is the patient's left, and we just a few adjustments in terms of pulling the scope back slightly, making some adjustments with the up-down. We can sort of follow the pancreas through the body. We're going to be over the right, the left kidney there. Again, and it's all looking, the duct is really small and a little hard to follow. There's a, what is probably a vessel there, most likely one of the splenic veins. And as we come back, I'm just pulling back, angling up with the big wheel, and we're into this hilum. So we can get a fairly good exam of you know, the pancreas from the neck to the tail at the, in this position. And we've really not moved the scope very much. We've stayed at about 50 centimeters through that whole process. It's mostly rotation. The other thing we'll see, we should be able to see in this position, is if we can see if we can find the left adrenal gland, which should be right in here somewhere. There it is, there it is, there it is, there it is, right there. So that looks the, like a butterfly. A, yeah. a butterfly or a seagull, we call it in Canada. So um, we can see that the left adrenal looks fairly normal. From there, we'll move down to the duodenal cap. Or, so we'll slowly move to the antrum here and into the duodenum to our next station. If we wanted to look at the gallbladder, this is usually the position just in the antrum or duodenum, but we'll just move into the duodenal cap. Or 
landmark there should be the portal vein, which we see right there. Um, and the pancreatic duct we see, and then the bile duct should be there. Yeah. So there's the bile duct there. Okay. The bile duct and the cystic duct? Or? Let's see. We can. No. That's bile duct. That may be the cystic duct. You just put the Doppler back on. And Doppler, Doppler. I think that's a, probably a vessel. Where'd the bile duct go? There's the bile duct there. Not so clear. There's the bile duct. And following down towards the ampulla. Now this lesion is sitting to the right of the duodenum, so we expect to see it, and it will be in a little bit of an awkward spot, but there's the, there's the head of the pancreas, and we're gonna come around to the right and see if we can find this. We had it just I think there, there we go. So there's the lesion there. So we're just, we're over to the right of the right side. I think if we follow this, there's the right kidney there. Just in the, on the edge of the screen, left lower the, so the right. right so it's, separate. so it's, a, it's separate from the right adrenal. Now we did see the, I think we sort of convinced ourselves if I can find it again the right adrenal gland may be right there. So it's separate from the right adrenal. Okay, so let's look at this lesion now. It's sort of right here. It's, it's really a mixed, it's a bit heterogeneous in terms of its texture. Doppler, we'll put the Doppler, yeah. let's put the Doppler on. This Doppler for a second. And we can just maybe mag up a bit. It doesn't, it looks avascular. It's somewhat irregular. It's not well circumscribed, but, and there's a focus. You can see there's a hyperechoic focus that's shadowing. So there's a focus of calcification just in the margin of it there. So I guess in terms of a different, and there may be a second calcification there, yeah. a second focus. So there's a couple foci of calcification. So when we think of lesions that that could apply to, you know, we think of, you know, occasionally gists can, can calcify, but gists are usually more hypoechoic yeah, yeah. than this. Um, it, we can see the muscularis propria of the duodenum. It probably is separate, although there is some, uh, it sort of runs right beside it there, but it just, again, as Jock was saying earlier, it doesn't really look like a gist. Um, the possibility of tuberculosis was raised in terms of it being calcified. Um, so it's, it's a bit of an unusual lesion, but probably benign, I would think, yeah. in comments. So our plan is to do an FNB, and I think it's in a reasonable position to do that. We're gonna have to try to avoid the calcification, but we can sort of adjust. We're in a long position, but I think that's the most stable. It's not huge, I guess we should uh, freeze and measure it. Uh, get some measurements. Two centimeter. Yeah, it's about that. So maybe just, so it's a, and, and I think the measurement on the CT scan was about, was about the same, so it really hasn't changed that much. Okay. Yeah, yeah it's okay. All right, so, our plan is to do an FNB. Um, the theory this morning used the uh, Cook Procore. We'll use the Boston Scientific Acquire needle, and these are and the size FN wise, any size I'm going to use a 25. 25. It's a small. It's a relatively yeah. small lesion, yeah. um, and there's really no evidence that there's difference in terms of tissue acquisition between the 25 and the 22 needle. So we'll use that with a slow pull technique. Yeah. 
So, you, I mean, the various yeah. techniques of getting the tissue, you, your preference is to use a slow pull my, carry or my is it... Uh, I don't know that uh, we know the, w if actually, there's a perfect, yeah. what, what the perfect technique is. I think um, the important thing is that we get tissue into the needle yeah. and whether that's, we're doing that with a, a slow pull, yeah. um, no, no stylet, but multi multiple passes. I think the most so important how many passes thing... Do you, do you normally I will do sort of usually do about 10 to 20 10 sort of yeah. passes. And you have a pathologist in the room or not? We do not, not in Canada, yeah. no. So our standard at home is we use F and B needles and yeah. we'll do three, yeah. three, do three to four passes. I, ex I express the, uh, the specimen myself. Oh. So you get yeah, an idea sure. what, yeah. what your tissue is. It's not as good, but I think our results yeah. are are fairly compatible, and there's been a couple studies. Todd Barron did one looking with the F and B needles that uh, between three and four passes, you can probably acquire the same results as having a cytologist in the room. So the first thing we'll do is just orient ourselves. I'm going to adjust the sheath here just so we can... So yeah. There's the sheath right, right there, you can see. So you're using the elevator a bit. I'm using the elevator a bit, which is easier with the 25 needle. Yeah. I think that's good there. We'll lock that down. We'll bring this up and we'll bring our stylet back. Yeah, yeah, okay. And then we'll bring the needle just there. You can see the needle there. Yeah. A little right talk seems to help a little bit. Yeah. And then just a quick little jab. And we're in the oh, in nice. the lesion, so we'll do a f slow pull. And again, we'll try to use a fanning technique. So we do a couple there. And I'm using the big wheel. You can use a big combination of the big wheel and the elevator. So very nice. You're going through all the lesion completely. To try to move the lesion. Now, there's a bit of resistance there, so I may be hitting the calcification. calcification. Yeah. I can feel it pop through. Yeah. And I can see the needle sort of on the other side. Uh, where do we go? There. I'm going to make sure I can see where we're going. I don't want to... There. Yeah. There we go. And even there, you hit that and it's firm. So there may yeah. be a fair amount of fibrosis in this lesion or calcification so as well. Probably be a calcified node. Yeah, which is it could be a calcified yeah. node. He doesn't have any others, but yeah. I guess I'd have to defer. We don't see a lot of tuberculosis, I have to admit. But the, only, the, the other argument for calcified note is that you had a resistance when entering the lesion and then much less resistance inside. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Okay, how are we doing in terms of... Yeah. I, think we, I usually pull to about three quarters of the stylet and then we just push the, sty push the specimen back. So yeah. I think that's good. So I'm going to come out there, we'll lock. And let's see what sort of our specimen looks like. So if you good. see a good specimen now, you wouldn't go further. Well, I think it's, we, we do have a pathologist next oh, no. door, I okay. guess, who can give us. So just put the needle out a bit, yeah. And I don't know if the camera can see. Starting to come there. Yeah. It's fairly bloody, but. If it, that's all the. And then flush, yeah, you can flush. We just sort of swirl that around and see if there's. It's hard to tell. It, like, there's a. No, it's not small it's it's mm -hmm. it Maybe a small amount, but. I think. They're going to take that next yeah, door, and maybe what we'll do a second pass while we're while we're getting this one looked at. Unfortunately, I don't. I'm getting old, and I don't. Bits there may be fragmented it? bits, yeah. which with a lymph think, node yeah, is not, not, uncommon, yeah, not right? uncommon, right? Yeah. I don't think you'd expect to get a straight bit here. Yeah, yeah. It'll be more fragmented. Yeah, so. yeah. Okay, we'll take the needle back, and while we're looking at that, we'll just do another pass. But 
So normally you do three yeah. passes. Uh, we we do we do three three, three to passes. four. Yeah, three. If I and if I'm happy that it looks like we've gotten tissue, then, and then we'll then leave it at so three. So what is the experience with this uh, biopsy? It's a thin biopsy you can pass through a 19 gauge needle. The uh, uh, the uh, the um, more forceps. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So for cystic lesions, um, uh, we would uh, we would use that. I've not used it in solid. But I, I think, think they've described this. For yeah, solid they've also. described it. I've not used it for solid lesions, yeah. but the. Um, it, you know, it does require you be, to be able to pass a 19 needle, and, which yes. is usually the limiting factor for using it. Thank you. Well, we've been off camera. We've done three passes with the 25 gauge acquire needle. We're getting small fragments of, of tissue, according to the, the, the pathologist. They're just looking at the last specimen, and we'll decide whether we need to do another pass, which we might use a 22 needle to try to get a bit more. Um, so our sort of our feeling is that this is probably most likely a calcified lymph node, um, uh, possibly a duty, maybe sort of a, a duplication cyst which is collapsed and calcified and scarred. Um, you know, again, we, it, it does seem to be attached. When we were passing the needle, the duodenal wall moves with it, so it does seem to have a bit of an attachment to the duodenal wall. Um, again, I guess raising the possibility of an atypical gist, but again, it's, it's not classic for that. So I think it's really going to, the pathology will be important, and I'm told that that will be presented uh, later in the meeting once we have, have the results. So we'll hopefully have a definitive answer for the audience uh, a little later today or tomorrow. Um, but that's sort of where we're at. So we're just waiting back to hear from the pathologist on the last pass, and we'll decide whether we need to do one more. And we've decided that if we do, we'll use the larger needle um, in hopes that we can get a bit more tissue. Congratulations. Well, and thank, thank you very, you very much. much for the, thank you. Uh, the nice demonstration. Thank you.